Good morning, Grace. Will y'all stand with us? Do you see? I see. coming back to life again I believe there's about to be another resurrection I see signs and I see wonders I see bursts of living color dead things coming back to life again it's about to be another resurrection. Come on. Come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are risen with him. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. about to be another resurrection. Come on, come alive. Oh, come alive. Wake up, sleeper. He is risen. We are risen with him. out if you see what I see. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. If you see what I see, that the grave is empty, then you know what I know. Anything is possible. See what I see. Yeah. Do you see what I see? Do you see what I see? And I see signs and I see wonder. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here. Oh, man, it's just a, a great morning to, to praise the King of the Universe, right? Yeah. As we come in together, you know that his presence is here. Two or more are gathered. This is a new song we want to teach it to you guys. We want to open the heavens in this place. Come on. Our 
our hearts, our hands, we're reaching out to see you move again. We can hardly wait, come flood this place. We're ready now, it's all about to change. So let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Let your fire fall, let your fire fall. It's yours, unlock the gates and open out the doors. So let your kingdom come, let your will be done, let your fire fall. Mountain shake, what was dead now comes away. And every captive breaking free. Right now, right now, right now. Come on, sing it out, darkness. And darkness trembles, mountain shake. What was dead now comes away. Thank you that where there's an open heaven, there's available hope.
Thank you that our hope isn't anchored in our circumstances. It's not anchored in the ebbs and flows of life, Lord, but it's anchored in the cross. It's anchored in the finished work. Lord, I thank you that we have hope on the other, on the other side of the other end of eternity and that our hope is in you and you're unchanging and that you're present and that you're near constantly through every season. God, I pray that you would help us see that and rest in that and walk in that and live into that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Welcome to Grace Fellowship Church. So glad that you're here today, whether you're in our audience for the very first time or you've been here since Grace Fellowship was birthed. We're so thankful that you've chosen to be here today. Those of you that are watching online, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that you will share this uh, service with someone you know, family, friend, Co-worker, maybe you're watching at work right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. We always enjoy getting to read back um, where people, how far Grace Fellowship is reaching. So if you are new here, I would I just want to tell you thank you and that we've been praying for you and expecting you. We're glad you're here. I hope that you find Grace Fellowship a safe place, a fun place, and a friendly place. Now, what I'd love for everybody to do, if you could, if you just grab your cell phone, go ahead and take that out. Check the silent button on it. Make sure it's on silent because as I've said before, we've heard some pretty interesting ringers in the past. And so uh, if you'll do that, that would be super awesome. The other reason why I ask you to grab your cell phone is there is a QR code located in the seat back in front of you. If you're in one of our sections and sitting in the front in one of our sections and sitting in the front row, it should have been in the seat there uh, for you. If you'll scan that, lots of things happening in the life of our church. And uh, so many really cool, incredible things. There's a couple of things that I want to touch on. First is our prayer request. If you have a specific prayer request, you can submit your prayer request through that tab. Just click that tab and submit that prayer request. Our staff, pastors and ministry leaders and admins, we all get together on Monday mornings and we pray for each and every prayer request by name. Also, we also keep up to date with what's happening with those prayer requests. So if you have an update and you sent one maybe a week ago, a month ago, let us know how things are going so that we can we know how to continue to pray for you. Also, any celebrations, we want to celebrate with you and your family and what God has done, whether it's healing, whether it's uh, just uh, rehabs going well, whatever that looks like, we want to celebrate with you. Now, I also want to touch on this is that just a few weeks ago, we had our, our baptisms right here at the end of at the end of September. We had baptisms in here, and one particular story stood uh, stood out to me was we had a life a kids life group leader baptize one of her kids during that service, and for me, that's absolutely impacting 
people's lives and people's hearts. So I want to tell you, and I want to say thank you to those of you that are investing in our students and in our children. There's people right now in this building that are investing in your kids. They're not just taking care of them. They're instilling into them the values and what Jesus is trying to tell them and, and let them know that Jesus loves them and cares for them. And so because you, we continue to do what God has is, is called us to do and because you continue to partner with us, we want, we're seeing God do some amazing, amazing and incredible things. And, and this weekend is no different. If you want to continue to partner with us, you can do so through that same QR code or through the generosity boxes located, um, located throughout the building uh, here in this auditorium and also outside. And so that is absolutely incredible. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you for that. So I want to share something really quick with you before we move on. I love to talk. You probably didn't know that. I always say I can talk to a tree stump, even if the tree stump doesn't talk back, which is okay with me. I don't mind. I just, I just, I just motor mount, motor mount, motor mount, motor mount. But I often find myself talking so much that I don't stop and listen. Now, does anyone else have that issue with talking, 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 and not stopping to listen? Whether it's someone across the table, at lunch, or at dinner, or in the living room, where we're sitting at home with my family. Sometimes I can just talk and not ever pay attention to what is being said back to me. Well, today, Pastor Chris is going to continue talking about prayer and what that looks like and what it is to listen to God. So I hope that you will stop and that you will listen to what God has to say to all of us today. You can follow along in the sermon notes in the QR code, and uh, it's going to be absolutely incredible because we've heard this message uh, a couple of times already this week, and uh, it's going to be really good. So take notes, and uh, God bless you. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Great to be with you today. Aren't you glad you're here today? Yeah. Yes, yes, me too. I'm Chris. I'm the pastor here at Grace. And if you're new to Grace, I'm so glad you came. We were hoping you would come. We were, we, we, we've been waiting for you, all right? We're glad you're here. We'd love to help get you connected in any way that we can. And I want you to know this. If you're new to God, you're just checking out the God thing, and you have questions, I want to assure you, you are in the right place. We'd love to help answer any questions that you have. This is a safe place to ask those questions. We'd love to walk alongside you in your journey. And, and I want you to know this. If you're not sure what you think about God, that's okay. I want you to know this. God thinks the world about you, all right? And he proved it by, by sending his son to the earth to take my penalty and your penalty for sin so that we could have a relationship with him. He loves you. He loves me like a perfect Father would, and he wants to have a relationship with you. And he tells us this, that, that, that listen, if you will seek him, you'll find him, and that no one uh, is far from God. And I hope that maybe you'll discover God for yourself the way it's, I have and the way that's changed my life. Now, today, we're actually going to talk about one of the ways in which we can seek God and, and, and get to know God. And so I want to pause and just pray and ask God to lead us in our time together. God, will you speak to us today? Holy Spirit, move in this place. God, silence any other distractions or noises so that we can hear from you. Ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, last week we said that prayer is simply communicating with God. It is having a conversation with God. And we know this, that good communication is the key to any healthy relationship. So, so if prayer is the way we communicate and we have a conversation with God, then prayer is essential to have a strong relationship 
with God. And uh, last week we, we talked about the idea that prayer enables us to experience God's power in our lives. And I encourage you to pray with me what Paul prayed in, in Ephesians 3, that God would strengthen us with his Holy Spirit, that he would strengthen us with a deeper understanding of his love, and, and, and that we would experience God's power in our lives that, that goes far beyond anything we could ask or imagine. And here's the thing. Maybe you prayed it. Maybe you didn't. Here's what I do. I, I would encourage you to start praying it. I prayed it this week for, for myself, for my family, for my kids. And even on the way to school, we started having the boys uh, pray after me and, and teaching them to pray this for themselves because we truly believe that prayer enables us to experience God's power in our life. Now, if you missed last week, you can always go online, gf.church, and check it out. There, But today, we're going to look at the other half of prayer, the other side of prayer, the other side of any good conversation, because a true conversation involves talking and listening, right? And that's the part some of us struggle with. That's the part that, that maybe we're not as good at. But, but prayers can kind of be like a walkie-talkie conversation, all right? You push the button to talk. And, and you explain, you say, but if you're ever going to listen, you got to let go of the button and listen, right? Too often we treat prayer like my boys treat walkie-talkies. They both just hold down the button the whole time and they're talking the whole time and they want to make sure the other person hears them and hears everything they have to say. And the reality is they have no clue that the other person's trying to talk to them at the same time too because they're still holding the button and they never pause to listen. See, we struggle to listen when we pray and what's meant to be a conversation often turns into a monologue where we go to God with our list of demands and our opinions and our expectations, and we expect God to just salute and execute. All right, God, that's all for now. I'll call you. I'll let you know when I need something else. That's so often how we treat prayer. We don't pause to even realize that, you know what? Maybe God wants to say something to us. Now, now this may seem weird to you because you think, wait, wait, wait. I've never had God speak to me. I've never heard God speak to me. Uh, And I want you to know that many of us have never experienced God speak to us. We've never felt like God has spoken to us. And maybe you've tried before. Maybe you've prayed, you had a big problem, you had a big issue, you had something going on in your life and you felt like God was silent and you didn't feel like God spoke back to you and listen, if that's you, I want you to know you're not alone. I've been there. I've had those moments where I've cried out to God and I did not feel like God said anything back. And maybe for you, because you felt like God was silent, you gave up on Prayer. And here's the thing, maybe God was speaking, but we just didn't hear what he was wanting to say. Or maybe he, he just wanted to see if we'd wait long enough to listen to what he had to say. Today, I want us to look at how we can pause to, to, to listen to what God wants to say. And, and what we're going to talk about, it's not like a formula, that this magic formula that makes God speak, but rather it's, it's a way to position ourselves so that we can better hear from God when he does speak. And I want us to look at a story in scripture, and it's in 1 Samuel chapter 3, um, uh, where, where God spoke to a young man named Samuel. Now, to give you kind of some background to understand fully what's going on in chapter 2, at the end of chapter 2, God goes to a man named Eli, who's a priest, and says, hey, um, I, I'm about to wipe out your entire family. He sent a, a man of God to go speak to him and to warn him, um, because Eli was a priest. And priests in those days came from the same family. The, 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 the same family line produced all the priests who would serve in the tabernacle, and their job was to help carry out and ensure that, that the requirements of the law were fulfilled, God's law, the requirements of God's religious law law were fulfilled. So so at this point, God goes to him and says, listen, you've failed to do this. You've overlooked the sin of your own sons and and their wickedness. So you haven't carried out your responsibility as a father and you haven't carried out your responsibility as a, a priest. And as a result, God said, listen, you have failed to raise up anyone who will honor me as a priest. And as a result, I'm gonna wipe out your family and then I'm gonna raise up a new priest who, who will honor me and, and be faithful to me and do what's right. So in a way, it was almost like God was saying, hey, here's your warning. If you'll do something about it, maybe things will change. But the problem is nothing changed. And in 1 Samuel chapter 3, we pick up on the story. It says, meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli, 
Now, in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. So this boy Samuel, God had given, uh, allowed his mom to come pregnant when she didn't feel like she could. And God had blessed her with a child. And so she said, man, I'm going to give my son back to God when he's old enough. So when he was old enough, she took him to, to Eli there at the, t- the, taber- or to the, the tabernacle and, and said, listen, uh, I, I want him to serve God, to serve alongside you. And so in essence, Eli had more or less raised Samuel trained him, took him under his wing and mentored him. And it says, listen, and during those days, messages from the Lord were very rare. And many people believe it's because there was a very spiritual darkness that Israel had turned from God. And it seemed just in the fact that their very own priest was not honoring God. And so there was a very dark time for them. And they hadn't heard from God likely because they turned from God and they were far from God. It goes on and says, one night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. A lot, lot going on here. In the tabernacle, the ark of God was in the Holy of Holies. It represented where God's presence dwelled, because this was before Jesus, and Jesus gave us access to God's presence. But in those days, only the priests would go into God's presence on behalf of, of the people. And so when Jesus came, he made a way for us to have access to God's presence. But at the time, the, 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 the tabernacle is, is where the ark of God was, and it represented God's presence. And this, this lamp of God was a lamp that the priests were supposed to keep uh, 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 lit all the time. They had to keep it running all the time. They had to make sure there's oil in it because it represented God's light, God's light that was for all people, which when Jesus came, he represented the light of life. And so it was a foreshadowing of Jesus who was to come. And and their job was to keep it going. And so likely Samuel's in there sleeping close to the lamp to ensure that it stays lit. Verse 4 says, suddenly the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up, ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up. Went to Eli, here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time and once more, Samuel got up, went to Eli, here I am, did you call me? Don't you know Samuel's starting to think, all right, Eli, it's too late to be pranking me and you're too old to be doing this to me, all right? It says, and the Lord came uh, and said, then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls you again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And as Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. It says, then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm about to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. He didn't listen to the warnings. He says, so I have vowed what the, the, that the... I vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Here he gets a very clear message from God. Now, notice he's sleeping in the tabernacle. And in that day and age, he was the closest person to the presence of God physically. And that's where he heard God's voice. And, and today, I don't want to look at so much as what the message was, but, but what he was doing and, and, and what we can learn from him in such a way that we can learn how to position ourselves to best hear from God when he speaks. The first thing we've got to learn to do is be still. We've got to learn to be still. God spoke to Samuel in the still of the night. There was nothing else going on. We've got to learn to get still and get quiet and be intentional about saying, all right, God, speak to me. I'm listening. See, the thing about a walkie-talkie is that if I have it on, I have the volume down, and there's noise in the room, there's a chance I have no clue that anyone else is even trying to talk to me. And I feel like that happens with prayer all the time. The noise of our life and the distractions of our life keep us from even knowing that God is trying to talk to us. 
And we already struggle to listen. And when I say we, I mean me, all right? I struggle to listen. Just ask my wife, Julie, okay? She'll be talking to me sometimes. She'll begin talking to me. And she thinks I'm listening probably because I'm like five feet away and looking directly at her. I don't know why she would think I'm listening because my mind, I'm a million miles away. And then suddenly she'll say, hey, are you listening? And, and, and I'll, now my face probably gives her her answer before I say a single word. But I'll say, of course I'm listening. Uh, remind me of what I just heard you say because it was so good. I want to make sure I got all of it, all right? The reality is we struggle to listen because the noise, the busyness in our head, the busy, I mean, just, it just, the problem gets compounded if there's a football game on or I get a message on my phone or something. It's like squirrel, right? We, we are so distracted that we struggle to listen. And the same thing happens when we pray. We fill our lives with noise. We always have a TV on, the news on. We have music playing, music, music our, our earbuds in. We fill our, our mind with noise as we scroll through the news and scroll through our social media. We fill our mind with so much noise and so much distraction that when God speaks, likely we can't even hear him. We're too distracted. And the noise of life is just so loud. If we're going to hear God speak, we've got to learn to be still. And, and here's the thing, is that it's not just the physical noise that distracts us. There's a spiritual noise that's going on. There's competing voices that wants to speak to us. That God wants to speak to us, but the enemy is trying to speak to us all the time, telling us lies, wanting to deceive us, wanting to destroy our lives. And, and we've got to learn how to silence the enemy. The truth is, is if you put your faith in Jesus because of what Jesus has done in your life, you have the authority in your life to tell Satan to be quiet. It. And he has to do it. But we've got to learn to be still and quiet the noise around us. If we're going to hear from God, we've got to do what the writer of Psalm 46 says. He, he said it this way, be still and know that I am God. I love that. Be still and know that I'm God. Focus your thoughts. Focus your attention on who I am. Focus your attention on me. I love the way the message of paraphrase says it. It says, step out of the traffic. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics, above everything. Step out of the traffic. Slow down. Turn off the noise. Get quiet. That's so difficult to do, right? Because we're just so busy and we got so much going on and we have things we have to do. And, 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 and man, the reality is we have kids, their schedules are busy. There's just so much. But question, when was the last time you binge watched a show for an hour? When was the last time uh, you, you scrolled through Instagram or Facebook or TikTok for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe even hours on end? You know, one time I thought I, I didn't spend that much time on my phone, so maybe you could do what I did. I went over to the screen time and I said, how much time do I actually spend on my phone? <laughs> I was a little shocked. And then I scrolled down to see what did I spend my time on on my phone? And, and I was convicted. I was like, wow, I give so much time to meaning, meaningless stuff. I fill my mind with all that noise. Maybe for you, when was the last time you spent a chunk of time playing video games or playing games on your phone? When was the last time you spent 30 minutes, an hour or more working out or at the gym? Now, listen, I'm not saying any of those things are bad things. The point is, is that we will set aside time. We will spend time doing the things that we think are important and the things that we enjoy, whether intentional or not. So when was the last time you paused just to be still and listen to God? for 15 minutes, for 30 minutes, who knows, maybe even for an hour. See, see, we'll say prayer is important and prayer is so powerful, but yet we struggle to be still and just enjoy God's presence, to be still and focus our thoughts on who God is and listen for him to speak to us. So, and because of that, when God speaks, many of us have no clue that God is even speaking because the noise in our lives is just too great. One of the ways that I've done this in the past is uh, when I was in Odessa, one of the things that I did is I said, you know what, I've got to start making time for this. So I started creating an appointment every Thursday to go have lunch with God on my back porch at my house. Now, here's the thing. 
it started really slow. I didn't even know what to do with myself. And I sat out there, and one day I actually fell asleep while I was trying to listen to God. And I felt bad about it. I was like, sorry about that, God. And I kind of felt like God said, no, it's okay. I want you to rest in my presence. And I started getting still, and then little by little, I started hearing God speak. And it was during that time with God on my back porch that God led me back to Grace Fellowship here in paradise. But maybe I wouldn't have even heard it had I not chosen to get still and listen. The way to turn up God's voice is to turn down the competing noise around you. But he's spoken to me in so many other ways. So, see, God speaks to us in so many different ways. One of the ways he speaks to us, God speaks to us through Scripture. Scripture is more than just ancient literature. It is the way that God has revealed who he is and who we are so that we know who he is. So we know who we are and we allow who he is to guide the decisions that we make. God speaks to us through Scripture. He, he, he record, had men record his words, and they've been preserved over the ages, and he still speaks to us through them today to encourage us, to build us up, to correct us, to convict us, to, to help us follow him, to guide our lives. And you may be new to this, and that is great. That's why we're here. We want to walk alongside you and help you with this. We have two classes that we talk a lot about this. The starting point class, we look and say, hey, this is kind of how it all fits together. Here's answers a lot of the big questions. You have other questions, you can ask those questions. But here's why you can trust Scripture. Here's why it's reliable. In our grow classes, we talk about how do you study Scripture? How do you, how do you study Scripture in a way that you can hear God speak to you? And here's the thing, we want to walk alongside you because we believe God speaks to us through Scripture. And, and if you want some information on those classes, you can get it through the QR code or stop by the hub. But we want you to experience God speaking to you through Scripture because here's one of the things that I've found. When people have come to me and said, listen, I just really don't feel like I hear God speak. When I've sat down and talked with them, what I find pretty much every time is they spend little to no time reading Scripture. One of the primary ways that God has spoken to me time and time again is through scripture. He also speaks through people. It might be a message at church. It might be, uh, it, it, it might be a, a discussion in your life group. It might be a song that someone sings. It might be godly advice or input from a friend that you're saying, man, I, I, I need some wisdom. I need some counsel. And they, God speaks to, to you through them. It, it might be through a dream. Listen, he's spoken to me through a dream. I know many people he's spoken to a, through a dream, there's many people in Scripture he spoke to through a dream. Now, here's the thing. You may be going, I have some pretty wild dreams. It might be that it's just wild pizza, okay? It might just be bad pizza. But, but what I do is when I have a dream, I say, all right, God, what, what is it? If you want me to know something from this dream, will you just show me what it is? And sometimes he just, what he shows me is stop eating so late, all right? But sometimes he speaks to me. So sometimes he speaks to us through circumstances. He'll open doors we had no clue were going to be open for us. Or shut doors that we didn't see, uh, we didn't anticipate those doors closing on us. And, and then when that happens, sometimes we're upset. We're, we're frustrated because it's like, God, what, what happened? What's going on? Why did this happen to me? You know what I found is so many times when I look back at those disappointments where God shut those doors, God used those circumstances to steer me in the direction he wanted me to go. It's much like the great philosopher of our time once said, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. <laughs> God can also speak to us through his Holy Spirit. See, see, if you put your faith in Jesus, when you say yes to Jesus, God gives you the Holy Spirit to live in you, to help you follow Jesus, to help guide your life, guide your decisions. So often he'll give us that feeling in our gut of something we're supposed to do, something we should do, something we need to do that's unexplainable. Maybe it's even unexpected to be generous or to encourage someone, to call someone. That's likely the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Well, how do you know? Because here, here's what I know. The enemy isn't going to tell you to encourage anyone, to bless anyone. 
to, to, to build someone up, to be generous. That's not what the enemy does. And when you aren't sure what to pray, you know what you can do? You can just say, God, will you, will you show me what to pray? And the Holy Spirit will begin telling you, hey, pray for this person, pray this, pray this for this situation, ask God this. If you will just get still, and begin to ask God to speak to you. But we have to be still. And, and we also have to be willing. We have to be willing to listen. Uh, we have to be willing to listen to hear what God wants to say, not just what we want to hear. See, sometimes God may something to, say something to you that isn't easy to hear. It, when, when it came with, with these walkie-talkies, right, somebody calls, trying to talk to you and it starts breaking up and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you, it's breaking up. I think sometimes when God tells us something, we're like, uh, God, I have a hard time hearing you. You're not saying what I want you to say. Why don't you say it again, but say it the way I want to hear it. Isn't that what we do? The, the first time Samuel, this 12, 13-year-old, ever heard God speak, what he said probably was hard to hear. Hey, you, you, your mentor, Eli, the one that you love, the one that you respect, the one that you look up to, yeah, I'm about to judge him and his entire family. And you're gonna have to deliver some bad news. But you know what? That's not the only time in Scripture that when, when, when someone speaks, you see this difficulty, right? You look at, at Noah. What God told Noah had to be hard to hear. Hey, Noah, I want you to build an ark. What's an ark? Well, it's a really large boat. It's going to take you a lot of years to build. It's going to be bigger than a football field and a half. And, um, and I'm going to wipe out the wickedness on the earth, and only the people who make it on the boat are going to survive, and while you build it, people are going to ridicule you. They're going to mock you. They're going to make fun of you. Don't you know that message was hard to receive? There's a guy named Jonah. God said, hey, Jonah, I want you to go down to Nineveh, where some of the most wicked, perverse, violent people live, and just take them this message. They're going to love this. Tell them, repent or you're going to die. It's going to go great. <laughs> Don't you know that's probably a difficult message to hear? And then you got Mary. We always have the convenience of hearing the Mary story on this side of the whole story. But Mary was a virgin. And an angel says, hey, you're going to be pregnant. You're going to become pregnant with the Holy Spirit. You know, we know how the story ends. We're like, wow, that's so awesome. For Mary, she's going, yeah, this is going to be hard to explain to the fiance. Nobody's going to believe me. My parents aren't going to believe me. Like, I'm going to be an outcast. She's not going, hey, this is going to be great for Instagram followers. I'm going to really improve my brand, hashtag influencer. Right? That's not what she's saying. Here's the point. Here's the point. That when God speaks to us, sometimes we don't hear him because we're not willing to hear what he wants to tell us. Because what he tells us may stretch our faith. See, and this may be the reason that we haven't heard from God because we're, we're listening with selective hearing. We're listening for what we want to hear and not for what God wants to say. But if we're going to hear from God, we must be still and we must be willing to hear what God wants to say and we must be obedient. We must be willing to do whatever God tells us to do. And what he says may not be easy, but easy has never grown our faith. God's desire is that our faith would grow. And as our faith grows, we'll become more complete as we learn to depend on him with all areas of our lives. He grows our faith by telling us to do things and to, to, to believe things that, that only God can do in us and through us. He told Samuel, hey, I want you to go deliver this news. It's not going to be easy. I want you to do that. And the next day, Samuel delivered that difficult message to Eli. When God says what he wants to say to us, we must be willing to do what he tells us to do. And you know what? It may not necessarily be because it's difficult, what he's asking us to do. Maybe it's something that just seems strange. It seems out of left field. You're not even sure how to fully process it, but you know, know that God told you something, and you're supposed to do something with it. This just happened to me recently. My parents' house in Nacogdoches has been on the market since January. They now live about three hours away north of there. 
And, and they had multiple contracts on it along the way. And all of them kept falling through to the, to the extent where the realtors started going, we don't understand what's happening. It's, it's priced right. It's in a great location. It's a great house. Like, like we don't know what's going on. And, and several of the realtors would get together there in Nacogdoches and discuss, all right, what's going on? What can we do differently? And so we began praying, God, will you show us what's going on? God, will you show us if there's something we need to do that we need to do? And one night I had a dream. And I woke up at 2 a.m. and it was so clear what I felt like God had said that, that it's happening, that they needed to do. And so much so that almost at 2 a.m., I mean, I'm wide awake, about to send them a text message. And I'm like, well, it can wait till morning. They're not going to change anything tonight. So the next morning I wake up and uh, I, I, I preach and I get in my car to go home and God reminds me of the dream. And at this point, I begin trying to talk myself out of calling him because now as I'm awake and I've been awake for a little while, like I start realizing how like strange it feels like this dream is. And, and not only that, they just made a trip to Nacogdoches and I'm kind of, kind of arguing with God of God. It would have worked a lot better had you given me this dream like earlier, okay? Because now, I mean, they just got back from a trip. And I felt like God said, stop asking me to speak to you if you're not going to do what I say. So I picked up the phone and I called my parents and I said, hey, dad, what are you up to? He said, well, we decided to make one last trip to Nacogdoches to make a final load. And I was like, it's like God was saying to me, I've got this. And so I said, all right, mom, dad, I, I've got to share something with you. I had a dream. I th think God's saying something to us through it, but I'm just going to share it with you and share with you what I think we're supposed to do, what y'all are supposed to do. Y'all pray about Y'all just do whatever it is that you think God wants you to do. So they prayed about it and they did what God told them to do. And then 10 days later, they had a contract on the house and they're supposed to close on the house in a little over two weeks from today, Lord willing. Now, here's the thing. What God showed me seemed weird only because we struggle to see the spiritual realm. I asked God to show me and he did. All I had to do was be willing to, to do what he told me to do. I just had to be willing to obey. We should not expect God to speak if we aren't willing to do what he tells us to do. You gotta be obedient. If we're going to hear God speak, we must learn to pause when we pray, to hear what God wants to say. He wants you to talk to him. He wants you to share your worries and your concerns. He wants you to pray that you'll, he'll strengthen you and, and to look to him and depend on him. But he also wants you to pause, to pray, to be still, to, to, to be, be willing to hear whatever he wants to say. And just be obedient to do whatever he says to do. That, that, that listen, if he says be generous, you, you're generous. If he says serve in the church, you don't, get, you, you don't put it off any longer. If he says go public with your faith through baptism, that, that you won't wait. You say, listen, that's clear. That's what God wants me to do. I'm going to do it. If he says call to encourage someone, send a text of encouragement, that you would send it right then. You wouldn't wait. That you would bless someone. When God tells you to bless someone, that you would step out and, and be a part of the process of becoming a life group leader. If God tells you to be a life group leader, if he says share your faith, that you wouldn't hesitate, you wouldn't make excuses, you would just share your faith and trust God to do what only God can do. When he speaks to you, you may be surprised what he wants to say. I love you, son. I love you, daughter. I am proud of you. You are my masterpiece, and I want to do more in you and through you than you could ever imagine. What are you missing out on? If you don't pause when you pray to hear what God has to say, you're missing out on hearing from the God who created you and he loves you and he has great plans for you and he wants to do more in you and through you than you could ever do on your own. This week, let's set aside time to be still, 
Let's be willing to hear whatever God wants to say. Just be obedient. As Taylor comes to sing this song, I want us to simply pause in this moment and reflect and make this our prayer this morning.
Let's pray. Father, will you speak to us? Will you help us get still, quiet? Open our hearts to what you want to tell us. Speak to us, God. Your servants are listening. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What a powerful, powerful message from Pastor Chris. I hope that you will take time this week and really pause and uh, search and seek what God's voice is for you and what he has to say to you. And I know it may seem a little a little difficult and maybe something that we're not used to doing, but I, we guarantee that um, God will speak to you if you will stop, if we will stop and just listen to his voice. We're so glad that you chose to be with us here at Grace today. Uh, we wanted to let you know just a couple of things. If you're interested in joining one of our short-term groups that we're starting kicking off next week, or you're interested in just being in a life group, we have a table out in the lobby area. We'd love for you to come by, say hello, ask your questions that you may have when it comes to uh, groups and getting into a short-term group and what that looks like. Also, uh, with three services, we're always, we, we believe here at Grace that if you get plugged in and you serve here at Grace, it's a great way to build your faith, grow your faith, and also build relationships. And so we'd love for you to consider attending one and serving one. We're not asking, we're not telling you exactly where you need to serve. We just want you to get plugged into the local church. And by attending one and serving one, we believe that you're going to grow in your faith and your relationship with Jesus. If you want to pray with someone at the end of this service, we'll have some prayer partners here. Uh, we'd love to pray with you and for you, whatever it is that's happening in your life. Uh, again, thank you all so much for being here. We hope you have a great week. God bless.